What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to address the one glaring issue with the Golden TXL cabinet, and that is the monitor. Of all the things that they got right with that cabinet, the monitor is definitely a step back. It's, it's a downgrade. It's a mistake. It should have never happened. It is the source of monitor gate. But in our darkest hour, modders in the community will come up with a solution, and I gave one of these solutions a try, and I gotta tell you, I'm really impressed. I had a video recommended to me by Justin, you know, console kits, and he said, check out the real smile bit. He's got this awesome video of an upgrade for the cabinet, and you got to try it out. And I did, and you've got to see the results. Check it out. Now, the key to all this is finding the correct monitor for this cabinet, and that is going to be the Dell P1917S. And you can find these on eBay. I picked mine up for about 50 bucks. This particular listing is a lot of two. I think it's going for about $80. And once you have that monitor, the first thing you're going to want to do is decase or strip this down to just the LCD portion itself. So I used a flat blade screwdriver to go ahead and get the process started. And after that, I used some plastic pry tools to gently pop those pieces apart. And once you get a good gap started, you can actually use your fingers to do the majority of the separation. Remember, the monitor isn't covered by a protective piece of glass or anything. So uh, we want to make sure we don't damage that. And once you separate the two halves of the plastic from the metal shell underneath, make sure you open this thing up like a book because there's still some ribbon cables uh, that connect the two halves together. Next up, go ahead and take out the four screws on the back of the monitor. And once again, remember to open this thing up like a book so that we don't damage the ribbon cables. Next up, remove the two ribbon cables simply by pulling the small one out of its socket and then release the bail so that you can disconnect the ribbon cable that attaches to the USB ports. Okay, so as we continue to strip this LCD panel down, we want to go ahead and remove the ribbon cables and this housing on the back. And believe it or not, foil tape is going to be the main fastener. Now these Dell monitors are going to have either a BOE or a LG LCD panel. And of course we have the BOE variety here. The last cable really isn't tricky, but it has a different fastening type. There's two spring loaded clips on the sides. Go ahead and press those in at the same time. And then you can gently remove that ribbon cable. Now with this LCD panel completely freed from the monitor completely, it is time to go over to our Golden T XL cabinet and disconnect all of our cables in the back. Before heading to the front of the cabinet to go ahead and take off the control panel, which is where we're going to be disconnecting two additional cables. Now it's time to get at that subpar, substandard monitor. Go ahead and take off your bezel. It is going to be a little stuck if you've never done this before. So just apply a little bit of pressure with a plastic pry tool to separate the bezel from the monitor housing itself. Remove the screws and then press on the back gently to free the monitor to kind of tilt that forward. And you can take all that out and then head over to the table. Now we've got to strip this monitor housing to get to the LCD screen inside. So we're going to start by taking apart the PCB itself. Now be careful with these cables. They're a little bit tight. So I swung it open and then I rotated the monitor all the way around so that you can kind of get a better view of the two main connectors inside. Go ahead and disconnect those and you can set your PCB out of the way. Disconnect that ground cable. I did use a marker to kind of just mark that location to keep things looking stock. Now remove the four screws that hold the LCD panel inside the housing. And yes, one of those is covered by one of those warranty stickers. You're going to be voiding the warranty by doing this modification, but I'm pretty sure you knew that going in. Gently open up the two halves like a book once again, and you're going to start to recognize some of these connections from the other monitor we just disassembled. Tape is used in many places to hold the wire and some of the connectors in place, so be aware of that as you take this apart. Be gentle. Just like the other LCD monitor, you're going to have these sort of spring-loaded clips Gently remove this cable and set it off to the side. We're going to be reusing this one. And before we sacrifice this to the tech gods, let's take a quick look at that monitor's model number. Time for the reassembly process, and the first step is going to be reattaching this cable here, attached in the same way that we removed it from the other monitor. 
Now this connector only goes in one way, so if you feel a little bit of resistance, go ahead and flip it around and give that a try. Once you've got that connected, reapply some tape to kind of keep everything secure. Gently feed the wires through the opening in the metal housing. Remember those edges are sharp. We don't want to cut any of these wires. Now the metal housing is much deeper than the LCD panel itself, so I had to lean it forward and use gravity to kind of help me line up those holes so I could get my screws started. Reconnect the two harness back to the stock PCB, taking special care to reconnect the LVDS connector exactly how you removed it. After attaching the ground cable to the metal LCD housing, I added a little bit of tape to the ribbon cable and the other cable that uh, connect to the control panel. I, they pass through this PCB shell or housing, and it does have a sharp edge. So I just want to take a little extra care to make sure that those don't get frayed or, uh, or cut in any way. And the final step is going to be to go ahead and remount the PCB housing to the back of the LCD housing. And we have a monitor assembly. And now it's time to take this monitor assembly and put it back in our arcade cabinet. So at this point, I have not tested this monitor just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a few screws in the front, make all my connections, and then, you know, find some wood to knock on and hope that this thing works. <laughs> Damn, that looks good. And that's exactly what I thought as soon as I fired this thing up. It, the difference is astounding. This is an incredible improvement. Um, and I'm so glad that I made all my connections right because this thing didn't catch fire. It didn't blow up. It didn't suffer some major burn in. The viewing angles are spectacular. This thing is beautiful. There is no distortion. There is no washing out. This thing is great. And this is exactly how this cabinet should have come to us from the very beginning. Okay, so there you have it. It is not often that you have a plug and play solution for a big issue when it comes to a monitor in these cabinets. And the results definitely speak for themselves. So once again, I want to give a giant shout out to The Real Smile Bit. The link for that channel and that video will be in the description below. He does a great job of really getting into all the ins and outs of the cables and the wire connections, um, and the differences between the monitors. So if you like this video, you're going to love his video, so definitely go check him out and support that channel. Give him some views, and if you like what you see over there, give him a subscription. And thanks for stopping by and checking out this channel and this video. Y'all have a blessed day, and I will see you next time.